Hi and welcome, I'm Jason Gray and today we'll be covering Fanatical Military Recruiting by Jeb Blunt. This is book number 14 of the 50 books I'm going to read and break down for you guys this year in 2019. Let's get into it. All right, so if you're a recruiter in human resources, building a business, need help, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, this book is for you. Now, it does have the, the, the focus of recruiters for the military, but this can be recruiting for any business, any job. It's all the same tactics. This just has a little bit of military lingo in there. And Jeb Blunt has multiple books and resources about uh, sales and prospecting, et cetera, that I think are very valuable. As you can see, you got a lot to get through today. I promise you it will be worth it. And what can be a better investment into your company, into your business, into your atmosphere than recruiting the right people? I don't think anything will be. Uh, so let's let's look at some of the pointers here. And you know, my background is I was a professional recruiter for uh, almost three years for two different companies. And basically, everything I'm talking about in this book is what I did and what I learned along the way. Um, so it has brings back some fond memories. And in building my business over the last five years, uh, I use a lot of these techniques for myself and for the people that I've mentored and are in and mentoring to open their own offices. So some of the first tips are ultra high performing recruiters are relentless, unstoppable prospectors. They are obsessive about outmaneuvering their competition and keeping the funnel full of qualified prospects. They prospect anywhere and anytime, constantly kicking down doors looking for their next opportunity. They prospect day and night. They ask, ask, ask until they get qualified prospects to say yes. Ultra high performers are unstoppable and always on. Fanatical. My favorite definition of the word fanatical is motivated or characterized by an extreme uncritical enthusiasm. So are you fanatical? If not, you got to get there. And if you can't get there with what you're doing now, you got to be looking for a change or build a change quickly. Top military recruiters view prospecting as a way of life. They prospect with single minded focus, worrying little about what other people think of them. That's a key. Worry less about what others think of you. They enthusiastically dive into telephone prospecting, area canvassing, cold calling, networking, asking for referrals, social media, following up on leads, working schools, setting up at school and community events, and striking up conversations with everybody. So what on that list are you not doing, or are you too afraid to do, or have you not considered? Uh, you probably want to add that into what is already working for you. Next tip. Uh, easy is the greatest marketing hook of all time. We know nothing really comes easy, right? However, when people use the words easy or new or fast, um, you know, little effort, it's comfortable, most people are drawn to that. And so, you know, I would say always be genuine, but make things easy for people or show them what part is easy or if it is true, uh, throw that word in there. Here's a quote, nope. You are not getting what you want because you are not asking for what you want. Why? Nine times out of 10, you are insecurely and passively beating around the bush because you are afraid to hear the word no. Now let that sink in is that's most people's fear. That's why they're less productive or not going for it. It's, it's the same reason why we don't think we can make 400,000 a year, a million a year, or we can't get super fit or get the woman or man of our dreams. We, we are worried that it won't happen or rejection or no, and it stops us from dreaming big or doing big, but we got to eliminate that from our vocabulary. In military recruiting, passive doesn't work. Insecurity won't play. Wishing and hoping is not a viable strategy. Only confident, assumptive asking generates the outcomes you want. Maybe you're not a military recruiter, but I'm sure you can use that in all aspects of your life. Um, here are two brutal, undeniable truths. The only way to eliminate rejection is to never ask for anything again, ever. And the second one is to be successful in recruiting, you must ditch your wishbone and grow a backbone. 
Wow, what a quote there, huh? Uh, everything depends on the discipline to ask. You know, in my organization, uh, we have the nickname Team 3D, standing for desire, dedication, and discipline. Without discipline, you're toast. And if you don't discipline yourself, others will discipline you. All right, here's, here's how to ask. Ask, shut up, be prepared for someone to object or have a concern. Ask, be quiet, and be prepared. Uh, so be intentional, be decisive, get to the point. When you're confident with your ask and assume you will get what you want, the probability increases exponentially that your prospect will respond in kind and comply with your request. And uh, later on this page says, emotional contagion is an automatic subconscious response that causes humans to mirror or mimic the behaviors and emotions of those around them. It makes it very easy for humans to both feel what other humans are feeling and transfer emotions to other people. Knowing how to leverage emotional contagion is a powerful meta skill for influencing human behavior. Now, anything that I read or talk about, I don't want anyone to use f towards manipulation or the bad. But if you're providing a great service, a product, support, whatever it is out there in the world, you got to really understand these things and be more effective. Uh, now, you, you know, you've heard this dog sense fear. Well, people sense fear and happiness and joy and enthusiasm and, and timidness and, and scared and all these other things. And so you have to make sure you're projecting the right emotions that will rub off the right way to the people around you, at least for the greater good. Uh, when you're relaxed, you're confident and assumptive, you transfer those emotions to your prospects, which reduces resistance and objections. In turn, you get more wins, and with more wins, your confidence grows. And you can see that. And by the way, these tips are great if you're training your team uh, in sales, marketing, recruiting, etc. Because when they're newer, they often don't think this way or have all that. They have more trepidation. Uh, the more you prospect, the luckier you get. We've all heard that. Inaction will breed doubt and fear, but action breeds confidence and courage. If you want to conquer fear, do not sit at home and think about it. Go out and get busy. You know who wrote that? Dale Carnegie. If you don't know Dale Carnegie, look him up. All of his writings and teachings are phenomenal and will help you think like the wealthy and build some wealth and businesses. Make your own luck. One of my absolute favorite quotes comes from the late great golfer Arnold Palmer. The more I practice, the luckier I get. There is a parallel in recruiting. The more you prospect, the luckier you get. Will training, experience, and technique make you a better prospector? Of course. However, it is far more important, remember this, far more important that you prospect consistently than that you prospect using your best techniques. When you prospect consistently, and that means talking to new people every day, you will make your mission, your goals. You'll make progress and grow. And remember, if you're not growing, you're dying. All right, next point here. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. You know, Put down in the comments some of the biggest takeaways so far and uh, anything that you can add. A lot of this is, is all about the mental game so far, right? All right, Parkinson's Law states that the work tends to expand to fill the time allotted for it. So give someone eight hours to do something that takes only an hour, like make 50 calls, and it will take them the entire eight hours. Hortzman's calorie is the converse. Uh, it describes how work contracts to fit into the time allowed. I simply changed the paradigm that recruiters were working under. Instead of giving them an entire day to make their calls, we gave them 30 minutes. And guess what? They got the calls done. So here's one. For example, the average inside sales rep at this guy's company makes 120 outbound prospecting calls a day selling employment advertising. To most people, that seems like an impossible number of calls, but what really causes people to double take is when they learn they do that in only three hours, which leaves plenty of time for all the other selling activities they need to do. Uh, they schedule their prospecting blocks into three power hours. Anyone that's worked with me knows I use power hours. 
uh, that are spread across the day, morning, midday, and afternoon. So they break their powers, hours up into high intensity prospecting sprints, 15, 10, 15, 20, or 30 minute blocks depending on the day. So you sprint and then you do the other things you gotta do. And then you come back to it with full focus and sprint and then come back to it as opposed to doing the same thing for five hours straight. Um, it's way less effective to do it straight. Uh, stick to your guns, avoid distractions. Prospecting blocks should be scheduled or blocked on your calendar with the same level of commitment as all your other most important tasks. You must treat them as if they're sacred in the same way you view a set meeting with your boss, parent, applicant, administrator, or important event in your family. Hey, you've all heard eat the big frog first, do the uncomfortable first, do the most important things every day, and if they're scheduled, be disciplined and committed and dedicated to them and get them done. And if they're not scheduled, you gotta go schedule, make your calendar blocked out right now for time to do the most important things. Yes has a number. If we were to walk down a crowded street in New York City during the rush hour and ask people to sing Mary Had a Little Lamb while we capture it on video, we get lots of people saying no and more than a few people saying F you, okay? But someone though would eventually say yes. It's just basic statistics. If you ask enough people, someone will do it. In recruiting, the more people you talk to, the more people you will enlist. That's how statistics work. It's just math. No matter what you're asking for, if you ask enough times, eventually you get a yes. So it's really all about persistence, isn't it? And fortitude and tenacity. And that's in careers and in business. Those are the people that win or win big time. When others have the same opportunity and don't win or barely win, it's because they're sticking with it and doing uh, large numbers. You'll find that the telephone prospecting generates more appointments than almost any other channel. So while people may think the phone is dead, it's not. Um, the phone has and always will be and continue to be the most powerful recruiting tool you have. Why? You can talk to lots of people in a short amount of time. You can hear their voice. You can start to build relationship. Um, and you can do it quickly because you can do it from one area over and over and over again. Uh, you lower your risk for your prospect by answering the most important question in their mind. So what's the most important question, guys? What's in it for me? Not, not me, like if I'm calling you, it's what's in it for you, right? The person that you're talking to, what's in it for them? They're thinking that, what's in it for me? And I always teach people, you don't want to tell stories that people are thinking, so what? You want them to be thinking, wow, me too. Uh, you want to touch them. So you have to relate to where they're at. Uh, okay, here's some, some points here. Uh, she discovered that when the researcher politely asked to jump in front of a person waiting for the copier without giving a reason, such as, excuse me, I have five pages, may I use the copier? The person would say yes only about 60% of the time. However, when the researcher qualified the request with a valid reason, because I'm in a hurry, the person said yes on average 94% of the time. So you need to have a because in there, in any of your scripts or when you're talking to people, or basically what's in it for them or, or a good reason. Because is a powerful word. Here's where the research gets interesting. When the researcher gave a nonsensical reason, like, excuse me, I have five pages, may I use a copier? Because I have to make copies. The person still said yes 93% of the time. It was a truly stunning finding. Saying the word because giving a reason was more important and powerful than the reason itself. So if you're, I know I have friends that watch this who are in uh, auto sales, selling cars. We have people in financial services. We have people in real estate. We have people in property management and mortgages and, and you name it, people view these type of videos. Um, Throw in the because. Now make it more sensical so that you, you feel good about it, it's genuine and, it, and it's even more effective. But just saying because and not, maybe you don't even know what to say or what's the smoothest thing to say. If you throw in because, over 90% of the time it's getting results. Okay, so for example, just saying I like to set up a short interview because I want to learn more about you uh, works surprisingly well with many prospects. 
What's in it for them? It makes them feel important that you want to learn about them. This feeds their insatiable need for significance. All right, everyone wants to feel important. Everyone wants to feel significant. You've probably heard that. All right, so instead craft a short, compelling message that connects emotionally with what is important to your prospect. Use phrases and emotional words like the following. Learn more about you and what you want for your future. Share more insights that have helped other students in your situation make more informed decisions. Find out about your plans for financing college. Gain an understanding of your unique situation. Learn how the military might fit into your vision for the future. Flexibility, options, peace of mind, save, frustrated, concerned, stressed, time, money. These are all things in the recruiting prospects, especially for the military, that they're feeling and when you have an answer to that, it's good. Um, let's see here. Ask and then shut up. We talked about that before. The most important step in the process is asking for what you want confidently, assumptively, and assertively. Ask for a day and time for a face-to-face -face interview or meeting. Ask for the information you need in order to qualify your prospect. Should you want to engage directly in a recruiting conversation, ask an open-ended question that gets them talking. Don't talk in circles. Don't use passive, limp language or phrases. Maybe if it would be okay, and if you are not too busy, we could kind of maybe get together for a few minutes. What do you think? Eh. One in a hundred, you'll get the appointment. Terrible. Be confident, direct, smooth. Don't pause. Get to the point, ask, assume, and shut up. Be quiet for being kind, right? All right. Uh, guys, we got a handful. Of, hang in here. I know this is going long, but this is awesome. There's phenomenal things in here. The next tip or one at the end might be what you're really looking for, okay? All right. The most insatiable human need. Every human being has insatiable need to feel important, to know what, to know that we matter and belong this need to feel important is the singularity of human behavior. Everything we do, good and bad, revolves around this insatiable need. Everyone, as Art Williams said, everyone has an invisible sign around their neck flashing saying, make me feel special. Genuinely make them feel special. A compliment goes miles. All right, people fear rejection, and therefore they don't ask for what they want assert assumptively, assertively, and confidently. You got to get over the fears. You got to be thinking what if in the positive as opposed to what if in the negative. Uh, some things, if people are giving you some pushback, you can use phrases like interest interesting. Could you walk me through your concern? Or just to be sure I understand your question or your concern, uh, could you elaborate a little bit more? Or here's one. Um, you obviously have a reason for saying that, Jackie. Uh, would you mind sharing with me what, why? Or would you mind telling me a little bit more? Okay, moving on. Your prospect has an expectation for how you will respond when they tell you no. Um, they have an expectation for what you will most likely do next. So when your behaviors match their expectations, no thinking is required. They just react. Okay, they're going with the norm. But when you disrupt expectations, though, it pulls prospects towards you. Different is sexy. Different sales. The amygdala loves bright, shiny things. Pattern painting, grabbing attention, is at the heart of the objection turnaround framework. Doing the unexpected is how you flip your prospects' reflex script and turn them around and pull them toward you. So how can you throw in something different there? You know, here's, here's a thing. Hey, that makes sense. Most people aren't interested the first time I call, and that's exactly why we should meet. So, you know, they were trying to get an appointment. The person said, no, they're not interested. Most people aren't. That's exactly why we need to get together. Take the next step. Hey, texting is pretty good. Um, it doesn't beat voice, but using them in combination, or if voice isn't working, go to text. Text messages are well received when they make your prospect feel important. Short text messages sent to congratulate them on a milestone, an achievement, a sports team win, an individual accomplishment, an award or recognition, or something they posted on social media will get their attention. Engagement text messages usually get a positive response as long as they are sincere. 
uh, personalized and free of direct solicitations for anything. The goal is simple. Give your prospect a reason to engage you in a conversation. You increase this possibility by making them feel important. All right, four more and we are done. Thanks for hanging in there. I hope you're learning, but most importantly, I, I hope you're thinking of ways you're going to go implement this, these things. And if you're already doing it, I hope you're encouraged to know that you're on track. All right, prospects choose to read your email or your direct messages for their reasons, not yours. So subject lines, the body of the message, it's really got to hit them and what they want, what they're concerned with, what they've been showing you interest in, it's got to be all about that or things related to that, not your desires or needs. You know, if you say, hey, like I got this big old long message, I would, wouldn't read all of it ever from some random person and they're like, hey, blah, 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 help me hit my goal, whatever. It's like, look, if I'm not a real good friend of yours or we haven't been talking about that, why am I an acquaintance going to read all this and the main takeaway is help you hit your goal. Probably not going to drive me or most people, right? Now, if you're my best friend or family or we've been talking about it and you're excited for me about whatever this said goal is and I say, hey, Johnny, you know, blah, 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 I'm so close, blah, blah, if you could look at this or do this, it would really help me hit my goal. I'd really appreciate it. Well, yeah, friendship there, maybe, because we've been talking about it and, and you've expressed a, a driving a force of wanting me to get there, but outside of that, it's a horrible message to send, especially blanketly to, I suspect, a lot of people. Um, social recruiting, social media, and things like that, one of the biggest things it can do is allow you to start to get into the mind of other people, see what they like, what they do, what they talk about, and then be more effective and put what's in it for them. So you can get glimpses into their uh, behavior, motivations, desires, preferences, and triggers. Uncover interests that lead to more impactful, robust conversations on the phone and in person. Last two. All right. When you follow, like, comment, and share the posts of other people, it makes them feel important. In the age of social media, those likes, shares, comments, and follows are like currency. They are gifts. The need for significance to feel important is powerful. It's a, the, one of the most powerful human drivers. This need is insatiable that when you make a person feel significant, you give them the greatest gift you can give another human being. This gift is one of the cornerstones of influence. By making a person feel important, you create a subconscious feeling of uh, reciprocation and gratitude. So, but be sincere guys. Don't be manipulative. Be sincere with your uh, compliments and making people feel special. Don't lie to them. Don't do it just to manipulate to get a yes. Um, do it to be building relationship and building up people. Again, the greatest gift to your business, to your community, and just to the world is building up other people, giving them hope and opportunity and love and kindness and all the good stuff. We need more good out there. And I think there is way more good in almost everybody. It's just not as expressed as much as negativity or other stuff that gets posted on social media or our uh, competitions and, and battles of the left, the right, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but when you have those thoughts and those feelings deep down for others, okay, I think we got cut off, but here's the last one is persistent and consistent prospecting. The first step in creating familiarity is through persistent and consistent daily prospecting. Each time you call, email, send a text message, engage face-to-face, hand out a business card or a brochure, leave a voicemail or connect on social media, you create familiarity. This is one of the core reasons why persistence pays off. The more times people see or hear your name, the more familiar you become to them and the people who influence and protect them. Simply put, the more you prospect, the more familiar you get. Guys, that was a lot of nuggets, but there are so many more in this book and probably some that didn't stand out to me or hit as hard with me might be exactly what you're looking for. So go get this book, Fanatical Military Recruiting by Jeb Blunt. I'll put a link in the description below. I rate it 10 out of 10 for sales, prospecting, marketing, recruiting, and more. And go take action on this, all right? Either you're recruiting or being recruited. And until the next book, which will be the breakdown of The Aladdin Factor, Join me in the pursuit of greatness.